NASA SLS successfully lifted off in fall 2022, but the agency still buys up to five Falcon Heavy launches. The first happened last week with the Psyche mission to the bizarre metal asteroid. More importantly, while NASA declared SLS is unaffordable for Falcon Heavy, they said it's an incredible capability for our nation. We're fortunate to have it. Why? What SpaceX Falcon Heavy just did totally shocked NASA scientists. Let's jump straight into today's episode. When it was envisioned in 2010, NASA's SLS was tipped to be the world's largest and most powerful rocket, in addition to being extraordinarily cheap and quick to build due to ample use of existing components, such as engines and boosters from the space shuttle program. Back then, the Starship was simply a concept, as was the Falcon Heavy the first attempt at heavy orbital vehicle undertaken by SpaceX, and roughly comparable in its payload capacity to the SLS. Then, in 2014, NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden uttered a quote that would go on to be ridiculed and memified ever since. Let's be very honest. We don't have a commercially available heavy lift vehicle. The Falcon 9 Heavy may someday come about. It's on the drawing board right now. SLS is real. Two years later, in 2016, Bolden said he still did not believe commercial companies were up to the task. If you talk about launch vehicles, we believe our responsibility to the nation is to take care of things that normal people cannot do or don't want to do, like large launch vehicles, Bolden said. I'm not a big fan of commercial investment in large launch vehicles just yet. Ironically, NASA and the SLS prime contractor Boeing are no longer competing with the Falcon Heavy. SpaceX beat them too, and Falcon Heavy was launched in 2018. Meanwhile, it's not until four years later that SLS can take off. But keep in mind that this launch burned to a total of $23.8 billion in nominal dollars. What a shame. Since that time, a lot has changed. Bolden appears to have changed his mind. In an interview with Politico published in 2020 in the publication Space Newsletter, Bolden was asked what might happen during the next four years. SLS will go away, he said. It could go away during a Biden administration or a next Trump administration because at some point commercial entities are going to catch up. They are really going to build a heavy lift launch vehicle sort of like SLS that they will be able to fly for a much cheaper price than NASA can do SLS. That's just the way it works. Bolden remains a popular and influential voice in the space community, but he no longer has a direct say in U.S. space policy. Perhaps because he no longer has to answer to Congress for NASA budgets, he is also free to speak his mind. In any case, his comments reflect the general sentiment in the space community, at least outside of the traditional contractors like Boeing and Northrop Grumman, who directly benefit from SLS development that the SLS rocket will eventually go away. When Congress conceived of the Space Launch System rocket in 2010 and directed NASA to build it, they were making two bets. First, they bet the new space companies such as SpaceX would fail. This was a reasonable bet back then, as SpaceX had lost most of the rockets it had tried to launch into space. Second, they bet that traditional companies like Boeing would be better at building big rockets. The congressional lawmakers who created SLS, it began with Florida Senator Bill Nelson and Texas Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison, and they were soon joined by Alabama Senator Richard Shelby lost both of those bets. So now... NASA is building a large, expendable rocket that has cost taxpayers tens of billions of dollars. Congress remains as committed as ever, both in budgets and public statements of support. However, the more that new rockets fly, the more difficult this support will be to maintain. In short, NASA's SLS rocket is probably proof of the saying, don't count your chicken before they hatch. Besides, there's another significant reason why NASA scientists S-H-O-C-K-E-D, by SpaceX Falcon Heavy launches, it's absurdly low cost. We can directly compare costs between Falcon Heavy and NASA's SLS. And upon direct comparison, the cost disparities are sobering, proving that commercial development of large rockets likely represents the future of the industry. To be fair, NASA SLS will have more lift capacity than the Falcon Heavy 70 tons to low Earth orbit versus 64 tons, and a bigger fairing to accommodate flying a wider payload into space. It also will have a more capable upper stage that will be able to send larger payloads into deeper space. 
However, these improvements come at a very, very steep price. Consider just a single data point. NASA annually spends about $3 billion to develop the SLS rocket and ground launch systems for the massive rocket at Kennedy Space Center. The SLS rocket was originally supposed to launch in 2017, but the maiden flight of the SLS booster has slipped to 2022. That is understandable. Most large aerospace rockets experience delays. However, the cost of a three-year delay is about a dozen billion at least. For the sake of argument, consider the costs of this three-year delay against the lift capability NASA could have bought by purchasing Falcon Heavy rockets from SpaceX. That $10 billion equates to 110 launches of the reusable Falcon Heavy or 67 of the expendable version. This provides up to 3,800 tons of lift, the equivalent of 10 international space stations or one heck of a moon base. Obviously, NASA does not need that many launches, but it could buy several Falcon Heavy rockets a year and have the funds to build meaningful payloads to launch on them. In practical terms, NASA has paid nothing for the development of the Falcon Heavy rocket. In fact, by leasing its unused launch complex 39A to SpaceX for Falcon Heavy launches, the space agency has said it saves about $1 million in annual maintenance costs on the historical launch complex. The question is really, why would the government continue to spend billions of dollars a year of taxpayer money for a rocket that will be unnecessary and obsolete? Lori Garver, a deputy administrator of NASA from 2009 to 2013, shared, If the U.S. continues this travesty, it will siphon off even more funds NASA could otherwise use for science missions, transfer vehicles, or landers that actually get us somewhere. Perhaps whenever we mention Falcon Heavy, we will be most impressed with its first flight that carried the Tesla Roadster and Starman into orbit. That debut flight officially opened an era of Falcon Heavy. After more than five years of operation, SpaceX has so far conducted eight Falcon Heavy missions. In particular, 2023 is considered the most active year for this rocket. That's because, after its third flight in June 2019, the Falcon Heavy was not working in more than three years. It was not until November 2022 that it launched its fourth mission. That flight marked a strong turning point to create a memorable 2023 for Falcon Heavy. Up to now, Falcon Heavy has launched four missions this year, accounting for half of its total launches, including the U.S. Space Force mission, Viasat Satellite Launch Mission, Jupiter-3 Satellite Launch Mission, and Psyche Spacecraft Launch Mission. Next month, Falcon Heavy will launch its fifth mission this year, launching the X-37B space plane for the U.S. Space Force. Thus, the number of launches in 2023 of Falcon Heavy will be more than all previous years combined. Based on that basis, 2024 will continue to be a year when Falcon Heavy makes new progress. Currently, there are about three Falcon Heavy missions scheduled for next year. But SpaceX seems to want to create a special thing with one of those Falcon Heavy missions. Land and reuse all three boosters. This was revealed by John Edwards, Vice President of Falcon Launch Vehicles at SpaceX, in his tweet, Next few heavy missions all require us to expend the center core, but should have at least one mission next year where we recover it. Astrobotic Griffin. The Griffin mission that John Edwards mentioned is currently scheduled for around November next year. On this mission, Falcon Heavy will launch Astrobotics Griffin Lunar Lander to carry NASA's Viper spacecraft to the lunar South Pole. This spacecraft's task is to prospect for lunar resources, especially water ice, explore and map the distribution of resources in this area. This will be an important task that greatly supports Artemis missions taking place in the coming years. As for Falcon Heavy, the intention to land three boosters is truly a bold plan. SpaceX has successfully landed the two side boosters many times, but they encountered many difficulties with the attempts to land the core booster. They tried to do this on Falcon Heavy's first three flights, but failed or were not completely successful. The first attempt took place during the Falcon Heavy's debut flight in February 2018. However, it failed due to the chemical igniter running out, preventing two engines of the core booster from restarting. The landing failure caused damage to the nearby drone ship. The second failure took place on the third flight in June 2019. 
The failed landing was due to a lack of control when the booster's outer engine shut down. It is because the core booster suffered a thrust vector control failure in the center engine caused by a breach in the engine bay due to the extreme heat. On the second flight in April 2019, this attempt was almost a complete success. Core booster has successfully landed on the drone ship, but it then fell into the sea during the process of transit the resun is due to bad weather, and Ralph sees along with its design has not been fully completed, making it unable to be secured to the deck for recovery. Since then, Falcon Heavy flights have not attempted to land the core booster, but SpaceX's next effort has absolutely a basis for success. Over the years, SpaceX has upgraded its vehicles a lot, especially through the Falcon 9 flights. SpaceX has gathered a lot of experience in landing boosters on drone ships. Landing the Falcon Heavy core booster will be similar to what they usually do with the Falcon 9's booster, although it will be a bit more difficult since the core booster will return from a higher altitude. If Spasis can land the core booster on the Drona ship along with the two side boosters on the landing pad, it would be a big stride for their Falcon Heavy project. Being able to land and reuse the entire first stage will further strengthen the cost optimization strategy they are applying helping their project develop more strongly and sustainably. Once successful, this feat would have a strong impact on the aerospace industry, especially NASA, which often underestimates the Falcon Heavy when compared to their SLS. In fact, in terms of design, the SLS has some better figure statistics than the Falcon Heavy. With a maximum height of up to 111 meters and a diameter of 8.4 meters, NASA's rocket is bigger than the Falcon Heavy with a height of 70 meters and a diameter of 12 meters. The SLS Block 1 version can carry a payload of up to 95 tons to low Earth orbit and 27 tons to translunar injection, much larger than the Falcon Heavy with a payload of 63.8 tons to low Earth orbit and 26.7 tons to geostationary transfer orbit. But if based only on size and design to conclude that SLS is better than Falcon Heavy is completely wrong, in just over five years since launch, Falcon Heavy has launched eight missions with a 100% success rate. Meanwhile, after more than a decade of development, NASA created only one SLS rocket and performed a single launch on the Artemis mission last year. With just that one rocket, NASA has spent more than $11 billion and more on launch facilities and related issues. More importantly, SLS is not reusable. In contrast, Falcon Heavy is a typical representative of the reusable vehicles. With the landing of two side boosters, it helped SpaceX cut a lot of production costs. In particular, they also do it in an extremely difficult way, vertically landing. It is a technique that requires very high precision. Landing vertically and reusing is a challenge that many companies and organizations, including NASA, are struggling to research but have not been able to do. Applying this landing method on a drone ship is even more difficult, but SpaceX has made it become a normal thing. And now, SpaceX will push it to a higher level, landing and reusing Falcon Heavy's core boosters. If successful, Falcon Heavy will not only create a new stride for its cost optimization strategy, it will continue to assert its strength and potential in the aerospace industry we still have to admit that the mission of these two rockets is much more different, so a direct comparison between them would not convincing. However, if we still need to give an evaluation, we can conclude that Falcon Heavy completely surpasses SLS in many aspects like launch times, cost, potential, and especially reusability. It's exciting to think about what SpaceX plans to do next year, including the Falcon Heavy plan. In 2024, we will witness many new records. After SpaceX plans to increase their total missions to 144, the Falcon 9 will continue to launch more to maintain its title of the most launched vehicle of the year. Starship Project will be promoted and expand its influence, especially after the great strides in the recent test flight. Along with these two vehicles, Falcon Heavy will also continue to operate more strongly to create new records and contribute to SpaceX's overall progress. Especially, we will look forward to the moment when Falcon Heavy's three boosters are landed and reused. 
not only create strides for SpaceX, but that moment would become a symbol for the aerospace industry many years later. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.